What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate those of you that were hanging out waiting for me to go live. For those of you watching the replay, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications and YouTube notifications so you get alerts when I go live so you can join in on the chat. Uh, so I had a few things come in. A fragrance sent to me by the good people at Fragrapedia House over in France, Lark Parfums. I've seen Justin talk about a few fragrances from them. Took a look around. I've done a few collaborations with Fragrapedia House. And I uh, saw the notes on this, and it intrigued me. It's called Memoir. So we're going to bust this one open and check it out. And then finally got my bottle of Chrome Intense, which is a another complete blind buy. I've been wanting to grab this one for like at least five years now. Been wanting to grab it. I think it came out in 2015. I think I've been wanting to pick get it since like 2016, 2017. I've been wanting it for a long time. For one reason or another, it never worked out that way. But we have it now. We'll quit fast and in a hurry. We got people in here. Yeah, Christopher Clone, good dude, good dude. Uh, not really big on the ASMR type of stuff. It's it's funny that we have a segment of that in the fragrance community, but hey, I'm all for it. You know, good dude. Uh, he's he did a video uh, about me not that long ago, so I appreciate him. He, we we message back and forth here and there. He's a good dude. No, what's going on? All genres, bops, unav in the house. What's going on? Rocking triple X and rose. Okay, club dinner we intense man. So I'm, I'm wearing. Miami Tropical Confessions two days in a row. I'm just, I'm loving the shit out of this one. Uh, full review is coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow is when pre-orders start for it. And uh, yeah. Soft citrus, creamy coconut milk to a warm fruitiness, thick floral, soft wood. Magnificent. Creamy, tropical. I wouldn't call it the most seductive of fragrances. I know it says Tropical Confessions, but very beautiful nonetheless i like this one more than tropical seduction uh which i'm a huge fan of it's the number one seller from the brand but it's good stuff we'll dive into it a little bit deeper in tomorrow's video but that's what i'm rocking today chrome intense when was that one released 2015 uh eight years ago what's going on sean how are you joel good to see you zinia intense i've always wanted to try that one isn't that the one that's kind of like armani code I've always wanted to try. I've been hearing it's been popping up the rack stores, not my rack stores, <laughs> but I've been hearing it's been popping up. Look at your take on. I've been wanting to get my take on Chrome Intense too. I finally bit the bullet and finally grabbed it. It's cheap. I mean, 22, 23, 24 bucks, something like that for 50 ml. 50 ml is plenty in my collection, trust me. Bahara Double Blue EDP. Well, it's got the word blue in it. So I'm intrigued. I'm going to have to look into that one. Popcorn time. Creed Royal, ooh, I mean, probably the best smelling guy here. Yo, what's your name, TLTG? My name is Ross. Nice to meet you, Affy. Um, I'm not going to assume that's your actual name, but got to try that for now. So uh, pre-order starts tomorrow, actually. He's a back-to-back banger-ass releases. Now, this is much fresher. This is just in time moving in to the warmer weather. For creamy as it is, it's still definitely a hot weather fragrance, you know. Aqua Sidiali Blue. I haven't worn that in a while. Let me pull that one out. Uh, Chrome Extreme. Chrome Extreme's my favorite. Aqua's my second favorite, which is featured in today's video. Still right here. And uh, I haven't tried this one yet. This might end up being my new favorite or my least favorite. I don't know. But I've never tried a Chrome Flanker that I didn't really enjoy. You know, United, Pure, the original. I love the original. I got a bunch of them. Um, they're good fragrances. I love the line. Always have. Cloud of Musk from Dua. Coach Platinum and John Ravedo's EDT at nighttime. Some stuff that gets no love right there. That's some good fragrances right there, man. And uh, for those of you just jumping in, we're at 61 people quick, fast, and hurry. Only 27 likes. Please hit that thumbs up for me on your way in. I appreciate it. Sidrat Essence, love it. Mont Blanc Explorer, have grown to love it. L'Homme Le Parfum, that's underrated. That's very underrated. Oh, not too bad. I can't complain. Had a great chest workout. It's a chess day, and uh, I'm technically supposed to have a cheat day, but because I kind of ate off the rails a bit this past weekend, I'm kind of just going easy on it on cheat day. Like, I'm going to eat a little bit more calories than I typically do, but I'm still going to technically be in a deficit. I just won't be in as severe of a caloric deficit. So I'm eating some rice and stuff like that today, but I'm not just gorging junk food and stuff like that. That's good stuff. I'm grabbing what's on the rack store. It smells kind of like Mancera Pearl. I've never tried Pearl, so that's good to know. Why Le Parfum, my favorite. 
my favorite wife, Flanker Vintage Green, my most worn Banana Republic fragrance. Yes, Bur Mr. Burberry Indigo is the best one of the line. I have a 30 ml and a 100 ml. Shout out to Chuck for sending me that 100 ml. I did a full review on it. I forgot how many months ago, but it was last year. I want to say maybe early, late summer, early fall. I did a full review on it. Strike Gold Shave Enchanted April. A bottle of CH Men Pass. I've never tried that one. Missoni Wave. That's still right here, too. This is, this is my jam right here. I love this fragrance. Love it, love it. Oh, man. I, if I come across it, I'm going to scoop it up. I'm going to scoop it up because I've heard it smells like the original code. I love the original code. And Xenia has never disappointed me. I only have a few fragrances from them. They've never disappointed me. I don't know. We'll find out when I open it here in just a minute. Dior Sauvage. What's going on, big dog? Thanks, bro. It's a nickname from my last name. Noted. Well, Catch my whiff. What's going on? Haven't seen you in a while. Voyage N83. I wore that a few weeks ago out the shower. That's, that's a nice one. H24. I don't even care which version because they're both really good. <laughs> you're, you're either really fresh and green if you're wearing the EDT or you're nice, fruity, and earthy if you're wearing the Eau de Parfum. Good stuff. I want you to take on an eternity. Okay. What's going on, Kyler? Creed Rolfa. Ooh. Four years. Finally starting to smell nice. Oh, it took four years. Damn. Ralph's Club EDP, very good. Uh, no. No, I haven't. My dad was a competitive bodybuilder. Um, my workout style is bodybuilding. Um, I'm not in the condition to get on stage. I still have plenty of body fat to drop, but I'm getting there. I'm, I'm very muscular, though, for sure. But thank you for the compliment. But uh, no, the wife said no competing. She, she doesn't want me competing because I'd love to diet for a competition. I'm definitely muscular enough to, you know, the weight class. I would probably have to get down to about 160 to compete. I'm a uh, 191 right now. So I still have plenty of body fat to go. I'm still like 21%. I'd like to get down to like 12 to 15 and hover around there. That's nice and lean. That's my goal to get there. I'm still a few months out from getting there, but I'm going to get there. And uh, it's not the end of the world for me to never compete. Now, look, was it a goal back when my dad was alive and he was competing? Sure. But it's for the love of the game for me. I train because I just love to train. I've always loved to train. I've been up and down over the years. I'll get fat and lazy for a year or two, and then I'll get hardcore into it for six months to a year. This is the most consistent I've been since I was right around the time I met my wife when I was like 23, 24. was the last go around of me being in like really good shape. So, uh, but thank you for that. Thank you for the, the compliment though. I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Chrome line is better than the Voyage line in my opinion, for sure. Chrome Limited. Okay. My dad had an actual Chrome bottle. I'd like to try some of the summer flankers. I never got around to those. Posting about George de Profondo. What a name for an <laughs> Aqua de Joe clone. Yeah. I want to say, uh, those are some of the Paris corner ones. I saw they have Profondo and Profumo. I'd like to try those. Hard to find though. EQ's in the house. What's going on, my man? Yeah, hit the like. We're at 41 likes, 80 people. We got half the likes to the amount of viewers. We got 80 people in the first eight minutes. I appreciate you guys being here. Do me a quick favor. Like my man said, hit that thumbs up for me. Talk to me nice. Exactly. Oh, yeah. For, for me, yeah, for sure. I think so. Bentley intense. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna kind of just skip ahead because we're gonna go ahead and bust into this one. Um, you guys seem to want me to do Chrome Intense first, so I guess we'll jump into Chrome Intense first. Let's see what we're working with here. So I'll pull the notes up after. I have Parfumo pulled up, and we'll do a split screen in a little bit. Uh, I haven't pulled up any of the profiles. It's on the home page. I've seen the notes a bunch of times over the years. I just don't remember it exactly. Um, I'm sure there's some citruses and so on and blah, 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 blah. Nice to finally see this in person because I, I know it's – it's got that stem. Interesting color to the juice. Much more of a turquoise color. I've always liked the chrome bottle. Chrome bottle is just an iconic look, right? I think it is anyways. Absolutely, sir. Glad you're here. First time texting here on your stream. Really love Evening Mystique. Tomorrow I will put on Second Soul. Well, enjoy. We appreciate the support. I'm glad you like them for sure. Second Soul is great too. Definitely. Oh, look, another one that subscribed for two weeks so he could do this. Oh, you cute little bitch. That's adorable. Okay. Hide user from channel. 
it's nice of you to jump on just to talk some shit real quick. And my fragrance is fantastic, you lying bitch. <laughs> you can be hateful all you want. You can't tell me even Mystique's not a great fragrance because it is. But anyways, let's go ahead and spray Chrome Intense and see what we're working with. Kind of a spray and a half. Definitely no mistaking it's a Chrome flanker. Immediate Chrome DNA. Give that a second. Still very fresh. Very, very fresh. I'm, I don't think it's any more intense than the original. Still smells like shower gel. But there's something a little different about this scent profile from the original. It's not as lavender soapy type of smell. It's more citrus. It's more citrus than anything. LMAO. Yeah, yeah, I don't play around with trolls. Fuck them. He could suck them. I mean, both of my nuts. Let's see. Phlegmatic. Yeah. So at least he got the frag. I doubt it. He probably doesn't. You got to remember, trolls are bitches that just like to talk shit. So is it giving a better impression than Chrome Eau de Parfum? No. No. Immediate first sniff. I don't think it's going to be better. The opening's not better than Chrome Eau de Parfum. It's actually more more fresh and airy than the original Chrome. I, would, I wouldn't sit here and call it intense. A lot of citrus, it's a little watery, but it doesn't have much of that metallic. A little metallic, but not as metallic as the original Chrome. It's really nice. I like the green aspects of Chrome EDP a little bit more. Chrome EDP has grown on me quite a bit since I kind of started going through that decant Made me end up buying a bottle, you know. Uh, Chrome EDP kind of climbed the ranks for me. This is really nice, though. I kind of like this more than the original Chrome. Hmm. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. You know, you made it when the trolls start talking. Start? <laughs> Man, it's been going on for years, dude. <laughs> years. Too much eucalyptus. That's why it's so fresh. That's the freshness. Okay. Because I have I don't have the notes pulled up. We're going to look at them here in just a minute. I just want to sit here and try to figure out what's going on with this fragrance. Eucalyptus. Okay. Sold yours. Well, I appreciate you weighing in, Dan. That explains some of the freshness. Because there is a little bit of a floral tone here. It's very, very fresh. A lot of citrus. I don't get too much greenery here. And it's not super soapy. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. But it also feels like it's got some body to it. Like it's going to have some staying power. I bet if you spray this one heavy, it fills a damn room. I bet. One ninety nine Super Chat Adolfo. I appreciate that. Going to rock my scent of the night. Even Mystique for the haters. Appreciate you, my man. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. So you can comment freely on this. Which Chrome Flanker is more on the beast mode side? Uh, I was, the most powerful one's Chrome Extreme. For me, on my skin anyways. Fan of layering, but Vintage Green and the Rolly Woods. I bet that does work together. I bet that does. Chrome Pure is similar to 1 Million Lucky. Ah, no, I don't think so. Chrome, 1 Million Lucky is way, way more gourmandish and sweet. Artisan Blue, excellent, excellent choice. You hope this explains why I like it. I love Creed Royal Water, which I do as well. It does have this minty tone. So let me go ahead and set up the screen share real quick. Allow. Let's jump over here. Home Intense, 2015. Let's see. Citrus, spicy, fresh, woody, synthetic. I would agree with that. I don't get a lot of spice, though. Mint at the top. Okay. Well, there's the mintiness. There's that added freshness. Bergamot, elemy resin, and musk. I don't get I don't get a creamy resin smell. Cardamom and aquatic notes. Papyrus, mate, patchouli, sandalwood, and vetiver. The musk, the bergamot, and the mint definitely make a lot of sense here in this opening. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot would say Soleil Daitali for what? 
I had somebody tell me in the comments literally before we went live that it's Ditali. I don't care. Ditali sounds better. <clears throat> Ernie says, suits a short, bald man who's incapable of taking crap. <laughs> Here we go. So, yeah, they're, they're lining up to, uh, to do this. That's hilarious. You little bitch. Run up on me and say that. Hi, user from channel. I think it's hilarious that these dudes go saying all this nonsense. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But anyways, we go back to Parfumo. I can see a little bit of spice, but it's not something I would call very spicy. It's definitely much more fresh than it is spicy. And the citrus really stands out here. I, I wasn't sure what citrus, but it definitely has a citrus juicy type of smell to it. The aquatic notes, I guess, enhance that juiciness. Definitely a watery feel. This is nice, but uh, it's kind of a departure from chrome, to be honest. Like, when I say departure, I don't mean great, greatly. Like, it still smells like a chrome flanker. TLTG is really an underrated masterpiece known as Bulgari Porom. I, I know that's your favorite. I know that indeed is your favorite. What's going on, Dave? How are you? We really thank you to enjoy CH Man Passion. It's got the nice iris note. Okay, that definitely piques my interest. Some people just don't understand how hard it is to put on creative fragrance. Oh, I don't, I don't sweat any of that. No, but thank you. No, I've never smelled that. Velvet Black Patchouli. Just bought some samples and it's smooth. First bottle of Mano Fresh. Really liking it. Never smelled it before. It's fantastic. It's a staple in any guy's collection for sure. I'm wearing fresh off to work. Well, have a great day, Dave. Thank you for stopping by. Bums can't knock the hustle. Bums is an understatement, my friend. So it is getting spicier as it settles in more. But it doesn't distinctively smell like cardamom. Like I, I wouldn't have guessed cardamom. Now they're starting to settle. I definitely get the spiciness. It's not spicy in the top. Super fresh in the top. This is good stuff. It's maintaining a deep richness while being airy. Still bright and airy. I like it. I definitely like it. Go ahead and pull that down. Just ordered Tarathi Blue. I'm pumped. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. It's good stuff. They're obsessed with hating on Ross. It's unhealthy and disturbing. They need the therapy. When I don't like somebody, I ignore them, not stalk them. But they, they don't not like me. I know that's a double negative, but they don't not like me, Kyler. It's the exact opposite. There's an obsession there. There's a clear exception there. Uh, obsession. About to head off to the gym. Just spray strap waze. Enjoy your workout, my man. Before you go, what are you training today? Oh, never mind. You put it right here. Chest and tries. Well, enjoy your chest and tricep workout. Thank you for coming and joining us. We appreciate you being here. Favorite powerful and masculine man, Sarah, for hot summer days. Ooh. Mm. As far as powerful, that's an interesting statement because it comes down to wave musk and silly dietily, which I have right here. But this one's much more airy than wave musk. Wave musk has more depth to it, I find. It's not quite as breezy. Still breezy, but not quite as breezy as this. But it would be between those two for sure. Um, in the fragrance buy package that just came in, I have a uh, so blue and lemon line. Lemon line's phenomenal. I tried that at Nathan's house uh, when I was at his house a few weeks ago, and I had to have a bottle. Fell in love with it. Um, I have vetiver sensual. I have Sicily, and I have so blue in that haul as well. So. A lot of freshies for men, Sarah. So that answer is subject to change. But where it stands right now for the experiences I've had, it's between Soleil Dietily and Wave Musk for sure. Definitely Wave Musk is hard to beat. Uh, very underrated stuff. Just picked up a bottle of Pure today. Really digging it. Wore the OG Chrome many, many years ago. Haven't tried any other flankers. Pure was your scent of the day. Thank you, my man. Keep up the hard work. Anything similar? Um, yes. Yes, in fact. Hold on one second. CEO. Let's see. Which video was that? It's this one. So Armoff made a clone that lasts a bit longer called Aura Fresh. I did a full review on it a while back. And here is the link. You can get it for 30 bucks from Fragrance Buy. 
I just dropped the link in the chat for you, my man. Uh, I get about eight hours of longevity on my skin with it. It's not as bright because it's a higher oil concentration. Versace Mano Fresh is an EDT. This is an EDP, but it's pretty much knocked down carbon copy. Still has the star fruit, that sour citrus. It's it's the same scent. It's just a higher oil concentration, so it's not quite as bright, but it is longer lasting. I, I'm a big fan of it. I would take it over Versace Mano Fresh. That's one of the rare occasions I would recommend the clone over the original. Love, love the brightness of Versace Mano Fresh, but gun to my head, I would take Aura Fresh because it's it's not as bright, but it's the same scent profile, the same quality, longer lasting. It doesn't have to be as loud for me as much as I'd rather the long the longevity. Talk to them nice. Nah, hey, talk to they need to talk to me nice. I'm not talking to them nice because they always talk shit and make posts and stuff like that. Uh, I currently have a second fragrance on the market. Uh, I had business over pleasure with Zaharoff uh, about a year and a half ago. And right now I have Evening Mystique on the market in collaboration with Zaharoff. So I'm two fragrances in, my man. If you want to check them out, click the link at the top of the chat. And right at the top, you'll see purchase my new fragrance, Evening Mystique While Supplies Last, or the link above that is to purchase samples. Lemon mint for me. Ooh, see, that's too creamy and thick and dense. Like it's it's a that's a heavy fragrance for me, for me personally, for the summer. Is lemon line good for hot days? I've only sprayed it once on my hand, and it's sharp lemon for a long time. Then it settles into a creamy wood. I haven't wore, have done a full wearing yet. I'm excited to, but that I couldn't stop smelling my hand. My wife loved it when I got home. I let her smell the dry down. It smells incredible. It was about nine hours before I took my shower that I had it on and it was still pumping. It's a great performing lemon, sharp lemon dominant scent. I think it's going to be great for hot days, personally. I think it's going to be phenomenal for that. Vetiver Sensual, I would like to officially blame that pickup on EQ. He praised it pretty heavily. And you guys have said a lot of great things since he praised it heavily. So it's like, okay, I need to check that one out. I got a 60 ml that came in. Uh, no, they will not be a permanent offering. Uh, once once they run out, they're gone. Uh, because of the nomination from the Fragas Foundation, uh, we filled a little bit more to extend it. Um, so we filled more bottles of all three because we were getting close. We were getting close to being done. But uh, we've extended it due to the Fragas Foundation nomination for packaging of the year. And uh, so it's still available for a while longer. So if you want to get it, get it. We still we still got them available right now. Yes, 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 and more yes. They haven't made a bad fragrance. I like every single one of them. All three of the Coach for Men flankers, the original and the two flankers that were out prior, and Coach Open Road. I like all of them. I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm excited for Coach Green. Uh, I love a gr really good green fragrance. I'm hoping it's really good. I'm, I'm excited for it myself, yeah. Have a rouge for 30 bucks. Forgot how much I love this one. Appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. She's the most masculine clone of your collection. Which would you pick and why? It depends. Everybody's diff definition is a little different because for me, it's a fougere that's got a lot of herbaceous spice with some aromatics. Um, one that comes to mind immediately is Kajal Ferris. I can't just say one. It's hard to pick just one. It's a Haroff Signature Pour Home, Raja Parfum Scandal Parfum Cologne. Kajal Ferris, that's the first three that come to mind. They're just like man, masculine, man's man type of scent profiles. Um, classic, timeless styles done to perfection and modernized. I would go with those three. Larky was the one that asked the question. You gave him the answer I knew you were going to say. <laughs> 10 4. Favorite CK flanker. Which line? Oh, no, CK, obviously. Um, Right now, CK All, I have to say. I'm, I like that more than all of the summer flankers that I have. I don't own CK1. I had it a long, long time ago. I never rebought it. I have CK1 Shock as well. I would say the newest one that I picked up, CK All. Definitely getting that evening mystique as soon as possible. I appreciate that, Dame. Cologne Podcast is in the house. Just stopping by to say bleep them trolls. $5 super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Is, is this Mike? that's chatting through the account or what? Um, for those of you that don't know, we were chatting offline. We're going to be doing a podcast episode coming up in the next few weeks. So uh, if you're not following the Cologne podcast, you should be. Check them out on Spotify. That's where I follow them. Appreciate the super chat, though, gentlemen. Let's see his passion for him. I'm in Massachusetts, so my summers aren't like Louisiana yet. 10-4. Not that I know of. I've never had any trouble with Fragrance by Fragrance Net. 
Joma Shop, e any of the, only once that I get screwed with a fake on eBay, but it wasn't one of my normal sellers. So I've got tightened up on there. I've never gotten screwed on Amazon with a bunch of those sellers. I've always done pretty well. Kyler. No, with $2 Super Chat, forgot. Send of the day, Safari. Great stuff. Drop some likes in the chat. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, guys. Scott Aromatico's in the house. What's going on, Scott? So let's jump into to Lark Memoir. I'm very curious about this one. This was supposed to be fruity, woody. Um, what else is going on in here? The note breakdown really was like, ooh, that I'm going to like that one. So I decided to roll with this. It's getting spicier and spicier. This is getting really good. I'm starting to like it more than Chrome EDP. As it settles, I, look, I really like Chrome Eau de Parfum. But this might have jumped ahead of it into the three hole, right behind Chrome Aqua and Chrome Extreme. And Chrome EDP might have fell to number four, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I'm digging this. Oh, this is good. It's minty and spicy. The citrus is kind of calmed down. Still a little watery, but let's check out Lark Memoir. Okay. I've heard Justin, I've seen Justin feature them a few times. I believe the white bottle. I forgot the name of the fragrance. Pull the sleeve off. Let's see what we're working with here. Magnetic flip top. Sure is. Okay. Lark Perfumes is a unique perfume house rooted in the love of art and travel. Lark has... As a metaphor, perfectly illustrates the ambition of the house. Each fragrance invites us to cross over to another shore, whether physical or spiritual, like a wondrous olfactory journey, a real sensuous odyssey. Similar to the stories of the master architect and perfumer, Lark bridges the gap between countries across the world, seeking out the best available natural and organic ingredients gathered from sustainable sources. Well, all right then. Well, this bottle's nice. Oh, shit. Feels good in hand, not too hefty. It's a nice bottle. Quality, quality build here. This feels like a, a nice brushed aluminum. Because like the glass feels heavy, but the base, like it, the balance is, the weight's all in the middle. Okay. Cap doesn't click, but it holds pretty strongly. It's definitely like an aluminum or something like that. Some sort of metal feel. For as thin as it is, it's actually got some heft to it. I like the texturing too. Get it to focus. I like the texturing to the cap. Cap's really nice. Okay. See what we're working with for the atomizer. Does a good job. Definitely fruity, but a little warm and fruity. A good spray on the hand. There's definitely some earthy, herbaceous kind of tones to this, but still very fruity. I think black currants in here. That might be what that is that I'm smelling. It's kind of a little dark and fruity. Oh, yeah, that's definitely black currant. This is nice. This is a tart, fruity smell at the top. It's got like a floral underbelly to it. There's got to be some florals in here. What's going on, Randy? Scott's rocking Bulgari Aqua Atlantique. Excellent choice. Uh, I think I know who Bilbo is. And I told Bilbo who I think he is. And he's like, who's that? I'm like, yeah, play dumb. <laughs> it's got like a mouthwatering yet tart aspect to this fruitiness. It smells clearly like black currant. These haters be wearing stiletto heels and panties. They're lusting for you, Ross. They love the way you got your beard lined up. Center of the day, sucker repellent, bond number nine, Bleecker Street. That was an excellent comment. I appreciate that. That was I like I that flowed really nice. I appreciate that. Yeah, I need to try the parfum, especially since you said it's much more green. Fragrance poetry. I don't know if I would say all of that. Volcanus coming in heavy today with the $20 super chat. My man, Green Ross and chat. Barbados 20. I have not tried that one. This is very fruity. There's a little bit of a warmth here. It's, It's got this mouth-watering ass. I wouldn't call it watery, but it's like making my mouth water a little bit. It's literally got that appeal. It's causing that. Like I said, there's some kind of floral undertone here that I can't tell what it is. It doesn't necessarily smell like rose or jasmine or anything, just kind of a little flowery. If anything, I'm thinking a little white floral maybe. 
and I feel a woody tone creeping in. Let's check this out. I'm, I'm very curious on the notes here. So let's go back to the screen. But thank you again for the $20 super chat, my man. All right. So let's go with... I got to finish typing it, apparently. Lark Memoir. Carnet de Voyage. I guess that's the full name. Yes. Memoir Carnet de Voyage. All right. 10-4. 6.5 out of 10. Shit rating. <laughs> I mean, it, for online, that's a bad rating. Five ratings, though. So that could just be like one person gave it a bad rating. Spicy, fruity, woody, synthetic, oriental. That makes sense. Pineapple, black, currant, bergamot. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't have guessed pineapple, but black currant clear as day. Rose and Lily of the Valley, Violet, Saffron. Okay, very floral heart. That explains that floral tone. That, uh, Like I called it an underbelly. Like it was sitting there waiting to really come out more. Like you could smell the, the beginning stages of the floral tone. Base of cedarwood, amber, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, and vetiver. So a lot of woodiness with the vetiver, sandalwood, cedarwood combo. It's getting very warm. It's warm and fruity with a little bit of floral tone here. And it doesn't smell super rosy or anything like that. It is a little powdery, but by no means what I call this a very powdery fragrance. I wouldn't even really classify it much as powdery. Like if I was to rank accords, like it's doesn't even crack the top five. It's a little earthy too. Even a little coniferous. This is nice. There's some complexity going on here. It's not a deep note breakdown, but the scent still smells deep. Like there's a little bit more to kind of wave through and dive through as you smell it. This is lovely. This is awesome. I mean, don't, again, don't believe everything you read. Try stuff for yourself. Yo, I'm wearing this tomorrow. If I wasn't already wearing Miami Tropical Confessions, I would put this on. This is really good. I think I picked a winner here. Bottle's gorgeous, too. I mean, I know we're in a small window right now, but this bottle is fantastic. This one's addictive. It's got a lot of character. I think that's why I like it so much. It's, it's got a lot of character. This is not a generic basic scent profile. This, I don't, it doesn't smell like something that's been done to death where I've smelled it a bunch of times. Quality is clear as day. I'd, like seeing synthetic is one of the accords. I don't find it all that synthetic. I mean, I have a chrome flanker on the other hand. That's much more synthetic. That fruitiness is not going away. Granted, it's only been you know, a couple of minutes, but I'm digging this one. I'm very much digging this one. Guys, get a sample. Get a sample of this one. This is worth a sample for sure. Just for shits and giggles. Because it probably has more ratings. Let's see what Troll Grantica's got with it. That's shithole. Let's go check it out. Where is it at? Mark Memoir Carnet de Voyage. What's the rating like on here? Woody, fruity, warm, spicy, aromatic, citrus, sweet, powdery. Yeah, Lily, there you go. It's not even in the top five. It's a little powdery, earthy. I agree with this accord pyramid for sure. As it settles, it's getting more woody. So, but yeah, warm and fruity. That's the, where I'm at right now. That's the top two accords I'm getting from this. Warm and fruity. Very much so with a little bit of a floral heart. It's not super sweet though. It's more tart. 4.22 out of 5 with 54 votes. Now that I could believe a lot more because this stuff's good. This stuff's really, really good. I like it a lot. Perfumer is Julian Rasconet, I believe is how you say that. I'm not familiar with his work. Same note pyramid. So there's uniformity there. Seems to be a pretty good performer according to most people. Again, you got to take this kind of stuff with a grain of salt. I wouldn't sit here and call this a Silver Mountain Water clone. That's interesting to see. A little bit, I guess, because of the black currant and the freshness. Like, it's got that watery 
type of feel. The black currant, if anything, that wateriness that I'm getting might be in even a little bit of an inky feel. So I guess that makes sense. But definitely not like super relatable, like more of that specific part of the aroma. Not not at all what I say is like a clone or they're ripping off Silver Mountain Water. I would definitely not go that far. This is really good, though. I think this is really good personally. It, it's great. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Let's see. Let me get caught up on these comments. Volcanics. Have you smelled anything from Aaron's Terrence Hughes? Uh, I actually did a live stream going over a few of them. I've got some decants, but I mean, I've got a thousand decants. Just like I got a thousand bottles. I've got like a thousand freaking decants. Um, decants, once I, once I smell them once, it's hard for me to keep going back to them unless I'm planning on getting a bottle. It's been a while since I've smelled any of those ATH fragrances. Definitely type in TLTG ATH or TLTG Aaron Terrence Hughes and just go check out that live stream because I don't even, I just smelled them the one time. So I can't really articulate my feelings right now, whereas it's it's recorded at the time if you're interested in checking it out. I have not tried Timbuktu. Uh, yes, they're selling it for a very high price uh, on eBay. eBay is really the only place to find it that I've seen in, the, in there. You know, two fifty plus, and we sold them for one fifteen retail. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, it's not easy to get. More, in my honest opinion, reminds me of one of the Brioni fragrances. I haven't tried any of the Brioni stuff. Fakar, after watching your light blue aquatic video from earlier, got in the mood for a blue. I smelled Fakar at Nathan's house, and it's a very good depiction of Y80P. I wouldn't call it one to one, but pretty damn close. And it's powerful. It lasted on my skin. Think about getting dosing on Italian Love or OG Vray. Ooh, that's tough because I like both. I just got Italian Love in. We're doing an eBay fragrance haul. I'm probably going to wait like two or three days. I'm still waiting on the other three twos. I bought the whole Toos Man line as well. I bought uh, Beauty of Capri, Light Blue Flanker. I bought Italian Love. I bought Forever. Uh, I have Two Man Chill, Two Man Sport, Two Man, Two Man Intense. Chills was from a different seller. The th other three are coming from one seller. They come in tomorrow. They've made it to Colorado. They come in tomorrow. I don't want to do back-to-back -back days of hauls because tomorrow is the full review on this. The following day is the fragrance buy haul. And I don't want the very next day to be an eBay fragrance haul. So I might wait till the weekend to do the eBay fragrance haul and probably do some reviews in between. I like to kind of spread similar videos out a bit. Um, so probably this weekend we'll discuss it. But Italian Love's awesome. I like it more than Forever. Forever is extremely tart grapefruit dominant. Whereas Italian Love, I find the bergamot jumps in the mix a lot more because they are very similar. And the patchouli is the big deciding factor for me. It's a beautiful earthy patchouli mixed with that watery citrus aquatic smell. Italian Love's my favorite of the two between Forever and Italian Love. Now, Ogivre, man, I, I think I got to go with Terre d'Hermes Ogivre. If I, that's hard choice right there. Cause I really, really, really like both of those. Italian Love was one of the best releases from as far as designers last year, um, in my opinion, but Ogivre, Man, I, I think I got to go that route. I think it's blasphemy for me to pick the light blue flanker over Ojibre. I, I, I can't. I got to go with Terre d'Ambez Ojibre. But you can't go wrong with either, though, man. You really can't. They're both so good. Never tried Whetstone. I've heard good things. I think Justin has Whetstone. I've tried it, though. Let's see. Love is Aura Wanted. I think I like the Most Wanted. or Most Wanted is my personal favorite. Wanted by Night's really good, but if I had to pick one, it's the most wanted for sure. I actually did a full review on that one too. Let's see. Uh, I've, I haven't really watched any reviews or anything like that. I know of them. I just haven't looked into them. I don't have one. Never tried anything from the house. On average, Joe would be the one to talk to about that. Okay. Put a hold on picking up new frags since there are 18 new announced releases that are on their way to stores. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The the one that immediately interests me, though, is the Coach Green Flanker. Just received a package. I don't want a ton of special oud. Kind of unique, non-funky oud. Slight fruity vibe. Kind of sparkly and airy, but keeps its depth. Depth, not a beast, but uniqueish oud. Well, well described. That's That's interesting. The way you spelled that out is pretty damn interesting, actually. 
I have not, sir. Nothing from Frank Olivier. I hate Terry DMS frags, but OG Vray is fire. Agree. I don't hate them. They've just always kind of smelled the, the vetiver strange on my skin. The only one I haven't tried is the parfum. And I think I'm going to roll the dice on the parfum sooner than later. I mean, there's no rush because I'm moving into warmer weather. So maybe for the fall, once summer passes, I'll probably jump on the parfum. It's under 100 and OG Vray is 150 plus. So OG Vray sold out. From Joma Shop, it was 95 bucks. I bought it for 95 bucks and it sold out. Um, <clears throat> Italian Love, I bought on eBay for 70 bucks. Tester, white tester box. Um, so I paid 69 for that on eBay. Uh, no, it could because it's kind of what and what. Because if you pay what I paid for them, like I said, I paid 70 for Italian Love, 95 for Ogi Vray. I'd still, I'd still pick Ogi Vray for sure. Picked up a bottle of Rogue's Mission. Clean, fresh, woody moss. DDLD is in the house. What's going on, Joe? Said I wasn't buying anything anytime soon, but now I'm really interested in Tonka Cola Dammy Ross. It's fantastic. I was going to wear it today. I'm wearing it. To, I was going to wear it tomorrow, too, but now I want to wear this tomorrow. Before the weekend. So Aquawood's getting bumped. Aquawood was going to finish my week, but now Tonka Cola's sliding into Saturday's slot because I wasn't planning on wearing this two days in a row. I just. I enjoyed it so much yesterday. I was like, screw it. I'm spraying it on again today. So I wore this two days in a row. And then Tonka Cola was slated for today. It got pushed to tomorrow because of this. Now, smelling this, it's getting pushed again because I want to wear this immediately. Because I've worn Tonka Cola a few times. I haven't wore this yet. I'm just starting to do full wearings of this. I've been doing test sprays. So you know how it is. You get something new. You get excited about it. But before the weekends, I'm wearing Tonka Cola again. That shit is great. That shit is fantastic, Joe fantastic and you like the boozy stuff and it's not super boozy but it does have a little bit of that boozy feel to it even though it's a cola note like um it doesn't have the cognac of a creation e people keep tying it to creation e i think it's like a 50 percent maybe similarity because of the cola but it's the, i get a lot of the cherry randy doesn't really get the cherry on his skin just a little bit but i get a lot of smoke spicy cinnamon heavy spiced cherry at the top Beautiful, soft and powdery Tonka bean, flat Coca-Cola smell, but it really, it blends so well. You see how excited I'm getting talking about it. Just try it. I'm not encouraging you to blind buy it, Joe, but damn, try it. Jesus Christ, it's so good. So good. Good to see you too. Haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, same. I, I paid 94 and some change before tax. Got to bounce. Holla at your boy. Blessings, King. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through. Montrese, what's going on, big dog? How are you? Still in love with Italian love. It's great stuff. The ancient OOLD is here. <laughs> Italian love's $36 in my Ulta clearance section right now. Well, yeah, they usually discontinue them yearly. That's crazy. That's great. Randy, you should buy them and sell them. You could sell them for double that, and people are going to scoop them up because it's, it's like the best price on the internet if you can sell it for double that, 72 bucks. I would scoop them up and flip them. If I were you, and I'm not a big, as long as you don't rip people off, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not a big fan of high, high price resale, but I mean, if you were to sell it for double that, that's $2 more than what I paid for a tester box on eBay. It was the cheapest hundred ML, like 50 MLs were going for what I paid for that hundred ML tester. So you'd be hooking people up with a good deal and you'd make a little profit. So that's just my advice. Do whatever the fuck you want with your money. It's just what I would do in that situation. <clears throat> Not yet. I will. I will. I usually get at least get a decant of every summer flanker. Not every, but most. Because uh, there's no such thing, in my opinion, as a bad light blue summer flanker. They're always good. They're always a little different. A little different from the previous years. They're not too redundant. It's like peer pressure. There you go. What Tonka Cola today. It's fantastic, right, Montrese? I know you got it way before I did. Aquawood and Bulgari Aqua Mara are similar. So I've seen the comparisons and a little bit. A little bit sure the incense and the citrus um i would say you don't have that muskiness that musky or it's not a musky orange smell like amara is with aqua wood i think aqua wood's a superior fragrance like hands down um not drastically superior like it doesn't like dwarf amara amara is still a good fragrance but if you kind of don't like that kind of bo-ish musky orange smell because some people were turned off by amara um which I do like Amara. It is my least favorite of the four I have in line. The only two I don't have is the, ton the tonic flankers. Um, it's still good. It's just my least favorite of the four. But I would take Aqua Wood from Mancera 10 times out of 10 over it. 
if my choice of wearings every day is Aquawood or Amara, I'd probably never wear Amara because Aquawood is just better in every way. Uh, performance is kind of what and what, but the scent profile is just better to me. Suits my taste even more. Ozzy Vray is very similar to Hermes Otre Fresh. Uh, somewhat, but it's much more bright mouth watering citrus and less vetiver. Like it does, the vetiver is not even listed, but you do smell it in Ozzy Vray. Um, but the Otre Fresh is still about the original's DNA, just very fresh. I knew you'd like it. Yeah, no doubt. Don't tell me anything. I didn't watch Buck's video either. I don't want to know because I'm going to get it. I want to try to be as blind for as long as I can because I know I'm going to like it. I know I'm going to like it. I love the Strong With You line. Just ordered all three along with tobacco, leather tobacco. Excellent, excellent choice, my man. Excellent choice. Hope you use the link. <laughs> Save you 10%. Uh, you won't save 10% off the Zed creators, but on the other two, you definitely would have saved 10%. So I hope you use the link at the top of the chat. Some people are saying, Europe, light blue summer vibes smell like O Intense. Ooh, that's disappointing to hear. Bottle's gorgeous, yeah, for sure. I mean, I have O Intense right here. Like most of the fragrances from the most recent video, still right here. I haven't picked them up yet. They're all right here. And believe it or not, this was still in my hand this morning when I went to the gym. I sprayed it on my hand yesterday. Only Man Hero, underrated for its longevity. Paid 40 bucks for Italian Love. Damn good show. Yeah, I missed out when they had them at Joma Shop last summer. Like, cheap as shit. They were like 50 bucks, 40, 50 bucks for testers. I missed out. Pasha Parfum. Ooh, not sure if it'll be today. It's kind of, mo it's the modern take on the DNA, in my opinion. I think it's beautiful. But I love that stuff. 10 4. Gave away my Tonka Cola decant. I get more lemon cola vibes in the opening. Very serious vibe of Loam Ideal EDP in the dry down. It's too familiar smelling for me. Not bad, just not my style. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I get plenty of the cherry, too. The cherry really works on my skin. But I get more of a smoky, spicy cherry, whereas it's a mouth-watering sweet and Ideal Eau de Parfum. That's just my interpretation of my skin. I mean, everybody's different, right? Um, but, I hey, I get it. That's one of the few fragrances that you and I – our opinions kind of differ from one another. That's one of the few occasions, you know, most of the time we're usually pretty in line with our thoughts. Yeah. Aquawood's so good, man. I, I bought, I blind bought a tester. I'm so glad I did. As long as testers come with a cap, I'll take the tester every time. Even if it's just saving five or six bucks, if it's got the cap, I don't care. I don't give a shit. If it's a plain box, as long as it's got the cap, I'm good. If I can save a few bucks, I'll take the tester. <clears throat> So people have been getting it restocked twice at Fragrance Buy. Right now it's out of stock. So if you go to Fragrance Buy, like click the link at the top of the chat. On the very top section, it's featured offers. There's a there's a Fragrance Buy link. Click it. Go to Stronger With You Amber and click notify me and put your email address in so they'll email you when they get in stock. There's no guarantee you'll get it because a bunch of people do that because uh, I missed out both times. So you got to be quick on the trigger as soon as you get that email. Um, but that's going to be your best bet to get it. No, it's a it's phenomenal. It's just too heavy at this stage. Like the leather tobacco wearings are going to be few and far between until the fall hits for me now. Because now we're moving into warmer weather. Um, never say never. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't want to watch it. I'm glad Buck's back. That's my guy. Shout outs to Buck, but not watching it because I don't want to be influenced by his thoughts. I don't want to know what he thinks. Because if he goes to loving it, which I'm sure he did. I'm going to start looking at it for retail when I know if I just hang out, I can get it again from fragrance buy for a little bit off of retail. So I'm waiting. Tobacco and Tonka bean is fantastic. That's arguably the best banana Republic fragrance. It's a kind of a cooling Tonka bean smell, like almost an ice cream smell with this uh, slightly earthy tobacco. It's not super earthy. Aqua is fantastic. One of my faves, if not my favorite, yeah, 10, four, see that there, there we go. Aligning tastes again. So 49 minutes. We'll hang out for a little bit. 100 people, 82 likes. Those of you that haven't hit the thumbs up, if you don't mind, please hit that thumbs up. This is definitely getting much more woody. The fruitiness is not going away either. Now, it's still early stages of this fragrance still. It's only been a little while, but this is a banger. This is a freaking banger. This is getting more like Chrome's DNA as it dries. Spiciness hasn't faded. It's very watery and fresh and spicy. 
I think for high heat, I like this one a little more than Chrome EDP. I think Chrome EDP is a better spring fragrance. Still good in the summer, but I think Chrome EDP is a better spring fragrance, kind of like Profondo Lights, because I kind of tie it a little bit to Profondo Lights scent profile. Kind of like Chrome Extreme ties to Profondo a little bit. They're not one-to-one, -one, but there's some similarities for sure. Whereas this, I think, has this breezy, watery tone without just smelling like soapy shower gel. It's not super metallic like the original Chrome. I think this is superior to the original Chrome. I really like this. I know some people aren't fans of this one. Teach their own. I like it. I like it quite a bit. This is two great pickups for me. This is fantastic. So we haven't done any ratings, right? Well, we got a few minutes. First impressions rating. I would say with Chrome Intense, you know, I think it's at minimum very good. It's not special. It's not super original. But for the line, it's one of the better releases for me personally. I think it's a 7.5 out of 10 fragrance. I think it's good stuff. It's very good. Performance, who knows? I really don't care. If I get three or four hours, I'm cool with it. Based on what I've seen, it seems to be a better performer than that. And I would expect it to with the, I still get like six hours out of the original Chrome. So I would expect to get at minimum that. And I mean, that's great for a very fresh fragrance. It's good stuff. Yeah, I like it. 7.5 out of 10. I'm a big fan. Now, Lark Memoir, let me make, it, make sure I say it right. Memoir Carnet de Voyage, probably Carnet de Voyage. I'm assuming that's the proper way to say it. This is a banger. This is a great fragrance. At minimum, this one's going to be in the great, in the eights. I, don't, I haven't decided eight or eight and a half yet, but I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I think it's 8.5. Yeah, we're going to give it the, the higher rating of the two of the of the eights for sure it's not quite outstanding it's not one of the best fragrances i've ever smelled in my life that's what nine and nine point five are reserved for some of the best things i've ever put my nose on ever this is up there this is one of the better fragrance i've ever uh, fragrances i've ever smelled but not one of the best of all time that i've smelled that's why you don't see a ton of nine and nine point fives uh but believe it or not something like 9 a.m dive got a nine from me because it's one of the best blue fragrances i've ever smelled I judge them individually. I don't just look at it as a whole across the collection. So this 8.5 out of 10, I think is a really, really good rating for this one. This is worth sampling. This could be a pass for a lot of people. I get it. If you have a bunch of chrome fragrances, you don't need to add it. You know, It's not a must-have from the chrome line, but this has some character to it. This is confident with a playful undertone. Because it's so woodsy, there's some earthiness, there's some florals. It's got a refined type of feel to it, but the fruitiness makes it very playful. The fruity fruitiness does not die down quickly, and it's not just a bunch of citrus. It's not over, even though pineapple's listed, it's not a hefty dose of pineapple. If anything, that kind of adds to the juiciness of the tart fruity smell, kind of the inky feel of the black currant. The black currant's clearly the most dominant citrus slash fruit in this fragrance, and it doesn't fade quickly. This is great. 8.5 out of 10 for sure. All right. Let's see. Where were we? Okay. Sure. I'm not touching until September. Yeah, for sure. That said, when I get home, I spray whatever in the mood, regardless of scent thickness. Yeah. When you're just lounging around, you're in climate control. Spray whatever the hell you want. You know, um, I still out the shower typically like to go with the fresh stuff, but that's not always the case. Your final thoughts on Gravite. I actually uh, just featured it in the weekly rotation. I like it. I like it. My wife's a big fan. Big fan. Uh, the way I explained it in my weekly rotation video is that it's not marketed for us, the fragrance enthusiasts, the people that treat this as a hobby, that buy fragrances for fun, not, for func not just for function. We buy it for fun. Um, like I said, it's a hobby for us. Whereas it has more functionality and it's much more viable as a wardrobe item for somebody who just gets one, maybe two, or, or like I said in the video, gets gets crazy and buys three fragrances. So they have day, night, and special occasion. Um, it's a great all-around daytime scent. It's very metallic and fresh and spicy, um, but it doesn't last the way they market it. I get like six hours out of it, which is still fine. It's 80 bucks retail. 20% off codes are everywhere. So you can get it for 60 some odd bucks before taxes and shipping or anything like that. I, th I think it's solid. I think that's a good market price for it after the codes. And I think it's good for the average consumer. It's a boring, generic release for an enthusiast. 
like when you have the amount of fragrances I have, it can be generic and boring, but I can still appreciate a fragrance for the way. That's why I think it's good that I, I make content because I can be unbiased with something that's super cheap or synthetic or smells like a bunch of other things. I can just judge it on its own for what I deem it to be good for. And I think that's the market they were going for in the first place. And I think it's good for that. I don't think it's a great pickup for most of you watching. It's probably not that great of a pickup for you. But for the average consumer, the person new to this, the person just looking for a new cologne, I think it's a good pickup for people like that. Hope that answers your question, Randy. That's how, that's how I feel about it. Most Wanted line as a whole is fantastic. The Most Wanted Parfum is a great release, great follow-up to The Most Wanted, which is still my favorite. Wanted by Night has been a hype beast over the years. Cinnamon, sweet, a little warm and ambry and tobacco. It is a modern classic in some ways. It's the most popular one of the line. Um, but for me personally, The Most Wanted is great. It's kind of like Stronger With You intensely but without the complexity. Like it's a more simplified version of Stronger With You intensely in many ways. If you can compare it to back to anything out there in a similar space. No, it's it's quite unique because it it has sweetness, it has smokiness, it has booziness, it has woods, it's got spice, it's very aromatic and leafy, it's not an earthy scent. Like picture all the different types of tobacco, boozy tobacco, a sweet tobacco, a woodsy tobacco, leathery tobacco, smoky tobacco. Kind of blend all of that together and kind of balance it out, and you get Zaharoff's signature tobacco. That's the best way I can describe it is you get a little bit of everything. And depending on your skin chemistry, it may dominate more to one type of accord. But then again, it's it's a pretty deep fragrance that's got some complexity. So you may get a little bit of everything through different stages like I do. Like I get I get in nuances quite a bit for me. I know there's a lot of people that it does do that for, but everybody's skin's different. Beaut the beautiful things, you can get a sample and see how it acts on your skin, see if it's full bottle worthy. Uh, but last year, that was one of my most worn fragrances, especially in the first half of the year. I put like that much of a dent in my bottle. So it's good stuff. Yes, uh, light blue for women. Big fan of that one. I'm actually going to get the intense flanker this year. Uh, Kajal Eau de Parfum is marketed for women. I love that. Juliet has a gun, lipstick fever, musk, invisible, and... I guess technically vanilla vibes is marketed as unisex, but lipstick fever. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, what's another women's marketed for women that I enjoy? I'm trying to think. Hmm. Rose and Marius, both of the flankers I have from those is stop over in the creeks and um, uh, sun kiss fiesta at home, I believe is the name of the pink one. It's a uh, cannabis and rose. <laughs> it's gorgeous, very fresh. Um, there's a there's several women's marketed releases that I thoroughly enjoy on my skin. Uh, I would go with Atlantis. Yeah, if I had to just pick one, I would go with Atlantis between the two. Uh, performance is a little bit better on my skin. It's a little bit more unique for sure. Uh, peach, apricot, florals, and clean musk. Sounds feminine. Really not great everyday wear for guys. I think Blue Atlas did great with that release. Uh, disregard the troll heat uh, for either of those fragrances. They're both they both serve a purpose, but if I had to pick one of the two, I'm going with Atlantis. Atlantis is the better fragrance. Close to what I've smelled is Tabarome. I have a decan of that. I could see where you're coming from that because it's aromatic. It's got a lot of lavender and stuff like that. That makes sense. I can see where you're coming from with that. Ryan, what's going on? On Atlantis, and I like it by the way. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I've, I've liked it from the start. So we're about at the one hour mark. We're about to shut it down. Let me get caught up on these real quick. For creamy summer fragrances, I have Chanel Lorem Sport, Sony Wave, Chrome Pure. Looking to increase that DNA. So you might want to get a sample of this. Pre orders start tomorrow. This is creamy coconut milk and florals with fruits and citrus. It's based around the Miami Tropical Seduction DNA but it's coated in creamy coconut milk. Very tropical, but creamy tropical. That's why I'm wearing it. I've worn it two days in a row. It's fantastic. I have four sprays around my neck. Uh, I left my arms available because I wasn't sure what the spraying situation was going to be for this live stream. Um, I've got three great fragrances on right now, technically. I would get a sample and try that one when they're available. 
Kate Alfreson, good stuff. Oh, I would have to go with Prada. Prada does lavender really, really well for a designer. It's going to be soapy. Just know their lavender is always soapy. Whether it's the Amber Pour Homme, I haven't tried the Intense, but Amber Pour Homme or the Lunarosa line, their lavenders are soapy. Even Prada Lone, they use lavender in there. That's what really gives that soapiness to the iris. Very soapy stuff for sure. Ah, oh, that's a tough question. I don't know. Chanel Lorem Sport O Extreme. Because <laughs> I've been wanting to get a bottle. I never just pulled it. I never pulled the trigger. I haven't worn it in a while. I have too many fragrances. I say that every time somebody asks when I haven't worn Have you wore this recently? No. <laughs> I have too many damn fragrances. I got like 20 fragrances come that have come in this week between eBay, these two, and uh in the fragrance buy haul. It's like 20 fragrances just this week. I've always got shit coming in. <laughs> I'm always testing new stuff. It's it's fun, but it's hoarding. <laughs> I had too much shit. Way too much shit. Definitely gonna check out that cream. Yeah, it's good stuff. I want to bet. What was the bet? Okay, cool. Thanks, sir. 10 4. So we are at the one hour and one minute mark. We're gonna go ahead and shut it down from here. I appreciate you guys for coming by, hanging out with me, checking out these two fragrances for a little bit. Uh shitting on some trolls for a minute that had the nerve to subscribe for two weeks and crack a joke. Um, to try to degrade me, which best of luck to you if you want to try to degrade me. Um, I'm very confident with who I am and how I conduct myself and present myself. And uh, I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much. Make sure you check out today's video. Tomorrow will be the full review on Tropical Confessions. Following day will be an 11 fragrance haul from Fragrance Buy. We've got some cheap stuff. We've got some niche stuff. We've got some fresh stuff. We've got some variety in that hall. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all have a good one.